think it's a nice way to go. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Our lesson tonight, Wednesday night Bible study, is going to be taken from Songs number 63. Songs Amen. number 63. This is a psalm of God's presence, mm -hmm. his provision, Hallelujah. and his protection. Oh, glory. And this lesson that is talking to David, this is actually a prayer that David prayed when he was in the wilderness of Judah. But we can all learn from this because we get in position sometimes where we don't know how we're going to get out of it. Things happen. We don't know what to do about it. You know, friends can't help us. They might want to. Praise God. We go to the preacher. He can talk to us, but he can't help us. Hallelujah. David found himself in a position where he was in dire straits. He had a son that wanted to kill him. Mm. <laughs> he wanted to kill him. And David knew that he would because he had already killed one of his brothers. <laughs> so David had to run. Now, this son Absalom, it talks about it in uh, 2 Samuel, the 15th chapter. And we're not going to go into that, but just a little background. Absalom wanted to be king. The problem is you can't have two kings at one time. So in order for Absalom to be king, he had to kill his father. So he went about going out to the people, getting a bunch of soldiers and going out to the gates of the city and Usually the king was the one when a person had a judgment or a law case or whatever against somebody. The king was the one who settled that. But Absalom would go out there and the people would come to him and he said, well, you know, the king ain't never set up nobody to do that. But if I was your king, I could help you. <laughs> you know, because he was plotting against his father. And so he did different things over time, and the scriptures say that he stole the heart of the people. So he got them on his side, not only the people, but even some of David's close associates and friends and people that worked in the temple with him. So when David heard that, he had to run. And the place he ran to was this wilderness of Judah. And this place was a dry place. It didn't have any water. Really? It was, a, you know, a deserted place. He, you know, probably didn't grow anything for food. Although when David left now, he took some people with him. And I'm sure he took provisions with him. But those people couldn't help him in the position he was in. He needed God's help. And sometimes we can, you know, we get into situations where can't nobody help us. This God's got to take care of this. You know, only he can fix this. Yeah. Only he can do this. Only he can protect me. And the scriptures say, tell us that he will, because when we're talking about God's presence, it says that the eyes of the Lord are in every place. Thank you, Jesus. Talking about his provision, it says God will supply all our needs. Talking about protection, the Lord will keep thee from evil. So God got everything we need. So David at this time, he was feeling a little down, although he was surrounded by people. He was still in a position where he needed God's help. And so he was praying this prayer for God to protect him, to provide for him, and to be with him as he was going through this situation. Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to go ahead and get into our uh, scripture. We're going to start with the first verse. O oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. Thank you, my soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Glory. David was in trouble. Yes, he, was. he was in trouble. He had to leave his palace now, his home. No doubt he could have had protection. He controlled the army. Amen. But the situation he found himself in now, he knew that couldn't nobody help him but God. 
and that was the one that he was praying to. And a lot of times we find ourselves even, have you ever heard somebody say, even in a crowd, I felt like I was alone. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's a situation you find yourself in, even when you're in a crowd. You know, because what, they don't understand what you're going through. They can't, you know, they just don't know. They can't help you. They might try to talk to you, but they they can't help you. Mm -hmm. When you think that, you know, no one understands what you're going through, and when you think that, you know, it just can't get no worse than this. But what? It always can get worse. But we ought to call on God at that time. Let's go to see what uh, 1 Chronicles 16 and 11 says. It tells us to seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. And this is who we have to seek. Seek God's face and seek it continually. Don't falter. Don't stop. He's the one that's got the help that we need. Isaiah 9 and 6 tells us that he is a counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He is the counselor. He is the person that we can go to in times of trouble. And Matthew 11 and 28 tells us that it tells us to come unto me, he says, to come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. Whatever we need, God's got it. He can supply it. Whatever situation we find ourselves in, God can help us. Our problem is we have to wait. Amen. After we pray the prayer. We can't go out and then try to make our own way, but we got to wait for God to do the work. Hallelujah. Wait on God. He'll work it out for Thank us. He knows exactly what to do. Okay, verse 2. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Now, David knew the power of God. Yeah. He knew what God could do and how God had helped him so many times, even when he was just a, a little shepherd boy, how God had protected him and he had seen the power of God. He had killed animals protecting his sheep and he, you know, even as a young man, he went to a battle against Goliath. He was so small, he couldn't even where Saul's armor, it was too big for him. Jesus. But God was with him yeah. even in that. So he knew, and many times he went to battle. And God fought battles for him and won. So he knew what God could do for him. So he was praying to the right person. Thank you, Jesus. So what, he was, he was just calling on God just to help him. And we also, we've seen the power of God. The scriptures say what, the angels rejoice when one soul is saved. Well, we rejoice when somebody is saved. When one soul is saved, we rejoice. So that's the power of God at work. We've Thank seen you, him, what, heal sick people when the doctor said, well, you know, it really ain't no hope for them. There's nothing we can do for them. But God can heal. God got the last word in this thing. The doctor's certificate say he practiced in medicine. <laughs> that's what it says he practiced in. But God has the last say so. He even seen him raise what? Raise the dead? He's still doing that. You know, we've seen him, so what? We should uh, give him all the glory and all the praise because what? In the times of sadness, he is our help. Hallelujah. He is our hope. Hallelujah. When, you know, when uh, we want peace and ain't nothing but trouble around, we got to turn to God. Amen. Before we try everything else, Hallelujah. try God. Because he is the one that can keep us and provide for us. When we think that all hope is gone, he is our hope. He is the one that's going to keep us. And this is what David is counting on while he is in this situation. Chapter, uh, verse 3 says, Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. That loving kindness is just the tender mercies of God. 
And David talked about it often in the uh, book of Psalms, that loving kindness that God had showed upon, that showed towards him. He said it was better than life itself. So it, his whole being knew that he needed this care, this tender care that God was going to uh, give him. Uh, in Psalms 40 and 11, it says, With whole not thy thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. He wanted his help at all times. Some people just want him when they get in trouble. But we should want him in the good times. We can praise him in the good times and the bad times. We can praise him because he is still God and he's still our provider. He is still the one that's going to take care of us. Amen. Psalms 119 and 76 says, Let I pray thee thy merciful kindness be for my comfort according to thy word unto thy servant. So David knew what God could do for him. He knew where his help lies. And then Psalms 143 and 8. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, yes. for in thee do I trust. Glory. Cause me to know thy way wherein mm. I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. Amen. David, so David knew what God could do. He Amen. knew of his loving kindness, Praise his him. tender mercy. He knew that God would have mercy on him and the situation he was in now. Now, he probably could have had his son killed if he wanted to, but he didn't do that. Instead, he ran away from the situation. But he knew that God was going to sustain him wherever he was. And, you know, and he's, uh, in the verse he said, uh, last part he said, my lips shall praise thee. And there's a song that said, if I had a thousand tongues, I would praise you with everyone. But even if I had a thousand tongues, it still wouldn't be enough. T Ten thousand tongues. It wouldn't be enough to give him the praise that he deserves for all that he has done for us. Because he has brought us from a mighty long way. So what? When we praise him, it brings us joy. It brings us peace. It brings us calm. We, you know, we praising him, but it's benefiting us. Mm -hmm. Okay, verse 4. Thus will I praise thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. So when often when we talk about blessing, we think about Jesus blessing us. But David is saying that he is going to praise him. He's going to glorify him. He's going to bless his name. Yeah. So as long as he lived, as Hallelujah. long as he had breath in his body, he was going to praise God. No matter what situation he was in. And he was in a bad place at this time. And he was going to what? Lift his hand. And it's a, just another so sign of praise that we can give God. Lifting our hands to him. Hallelujah. And we ought to praise and glorify to your Lord while we live. Once we go on, we can't do nothing. <laughs> Once we are gone, it's over. But while we are here, we can lift our hands and our voices and praise him and bless his name for all the wonderful things that he has done for us. And it, you know, might seem small to somebody, yeah. to other people. But what he does for us, to us, it's a big thing. Hallelujah. When when he takes us through, it's a big thing. Okay, verse 4 says, Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift, did I just read that one? I will lift up my hands in thy name. Yes. So what? We can lift our hands and our voice yes. to yes. praise yes. him. Hallelujah. Verse 5 says, My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. Yes. And I was, I said, now what, what is that talking about as with marrow and fatness? But it's talking, it's saying that uh, his soul was satisfied, like he just had the best meal he had ever had in his life, and it filled him just the right spot. And I mean, he just good. He just fine now. 
And so this is what he's saying. His soul is satisfied, like, you know, towards God because he knows who God is. And he was going to praise him with his mouth and with his lips. He was going to praise him. He was going to continually praise him for his goodness towards him. And what? In times of trouble, we can praise him. We can praise now. It's easy, really, to praise him in the good times. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But sometimes you're going through so, so much, you, look, you don't even know what to say. You don't even know. So that's when you got to throw your hands up. And that's when you got to moan a little bit <laughs> and you groan a little bit. Why? Because he knows what we need, but he still wants us to ask. Because that what? He knows then what, that we are putting our trust in him. He wants us to ask so he can bless us. Why? Because he does love us. He does show that loving kindness towards us. Look what he did. He died on Calvary's cross. He wouldn't do that for somebody he didn't love. And we didn't even deserve it. Hallelujah. But he did it. Okay, let's go to verse 6. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. Now, you know he got a bed. And you know you have been in that situation. Sometimes you laying in your bed and can't sleep because all your troubles running through your head. And you don't know what to do about them. But then all you got to do is think about God and his goodness. If you can remember the things he done already brought you through, when you know that, what? You can look back and say, how in the world did I come through that? How did I get over that? If we can lay in bed at night when we can't sleep and remember the goodness of God and the things that he has done for us and how good he has been towards us and the things he done brought us out of, then we, what, just meditate on that. Just think of it, because that, what, that'll take your mind off all that other stuff you're going through. Because you know if he brought you through that, then he can bring me through this. If he did it back then, mm -hmm. he hasn't lost any power. Yeah. He can bring me through now. Yeah. So what? We should uh, keep uh, the word of God in our hearts, and we should put it in our memory. And that's why we got to read the scriptures. We got to know it. You know, sometimes you got to sing a song, you know, to yourself. You know, just to, just to you know, lift yourself up. And even... It says when in him, even when he was sitting up waiting for the enemy to come against him, even in the night watches, he was still praising God. Hallelujah. So we got to continually praise him because what he is our God. We can get help from other people sometimes and friends and family and sometimes, but God is the one that can sustain us. When he does a work, it's done. Nobody else has to fix it or help it. God does a work, it's done. So what? Let's put our trust in him and keep believing that he, whatever situation we are in, God is going to take us through it. Thank you, Jesus. And verse 7 says, Because thou hast been my help, therefore in thy shadow... In the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. David knew who his help was. He knew God was his help. He, he didn't have anybody else. As many times that he had gone to battle and won his battles when, you know, sometimes he knew that he shouldn't have won. But what? God made it possible. Sometimes all he had to do was show up. And God fought for him. And he's doing the same thing for us. You know, we can't, you know, we can't fight this thing on our own. We got to have God on our side. So what? We got the same hope, the same help that David had. God has not lost any power. And what he did for one, he'll do for all. I don't care if this is the Old Testament. What? He's still the same. 
He's still the same. He still can help. And when we need help, he's the one that we should go to. So it, we so we have uh, the same hope, Psalms 91 and 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. He is our protection. When we hide under his wings, we ain't got to worry about nobody else. Nothing coming up against us. David was in dire need. He was in dire straits. His own son was coming after him Amen. to kill him because he wanted what David had. Amen. And he knew he was going to do it. Like I said, he had already killed one brother. Right. He didn't mind killing his daddy for what he wanted him to do. So what? But he was, he was hiding under the power of God. Hallelujah. He was letting God be his protection, Amen. his help. His provision. Okay, we're going to verse 8. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. Now, you've seen people come to church a couple Sundays, stay home a couple Sundays, come back to church for a Sunday, stay home. But this scripture said, when it says he going to follow hard after thee. That means that he gonna not only continue to do it, but he gonna stay close. Yeah. He gonna stay close and continue to, to follow uh, God because he knew God and he knew what he could do for him. So what he said, I will follow you with everything that I have in my humanity, my very being, who I am. Uh, will not falter in following you. The power you have in your hand will keep me, lead me, and sustain me. And he, and what? God, like I said, he has not lost any power. What he did for David, he can do it for us. So what? We can also pray, you know, to God for the help that we need when we're in trouble. Because he's still God. He's still answering prayers. He's still delivering. Amen. Let's go see what Isaiah 41 and 10 says. It says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Isn't that some good words from God? He's letting us know that he's right here. I'm right here. I'm right beside you. You know, people say, oh, I got your back until you get into trouble, and then they turn it and go the other way. <laughs> they might be behind you, but they ain't got your back. <laughs> so what? Let God be the one that keeps us. And in that same chapter of Isaiah, Isaiah 41 and 13, it says, For I, the Lord, thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. God is a present help in the time of trouble. The scriptures say so. And the scriptures not telling us any stories. What's in there is true, and it's for us. We can depend on it. Hallelujah. You know, we can trust in him. Yeah. Put our hope in him. That's where our hope is. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, verse uh, 9. But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. Yeah. Now, David could pray that prayer. Because he was living under the law. <laughs> under the law, they believed in an eye for eye and a two for two. Mm -hmm. We living under grace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Scripture tells us to pray for our enemies. <laughs> Love them that deceitfully despise and use us. Mm -hmm. So we can't pray destruction on our enemies. We got to pray salvation for them, that they'll be saved. So, you know, don't pray that the Lord will destroy them, <laughs> but that he'll save them. See, because David could get away with that at the time. 
you know, but we can't do that now. But he knew that God was going to take care of his enemy for him. And if we let him today, he'll take care of them for us. Sometimes the worst person that gives you the most trouble wind up being your best friend. Pray for him. Pray for him. Sometimes the person that gives you the worst trouble, they wind up being your best friend. Why? Because you let God take care of it. You didn't go in there fighting your own battles and dotting their eyes and, you know, taking care of it your own self. But you let God handle it. Let him handle it. Because we can't pray, God, strike them down dead, kill them. Put them in the ground. <laughs> we can't do that. <laughs> we got to praise for salvation for our enemies. We got to love them. <laughs> okay, let's go to verse 10. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for foxes. Now, David is talking bad about his, this is his son he's talking about now. And all of his friends that joined up with his son to fight against him, he pretty much saying, Lord, you, you take care of him and let the animals have the rest. <laughs> That's what he's saying. But what? We cannot do that. Again, we can't, we can't pray that prayer. We can't pray that prayer. God didn't talk. Jesus, well, he died on, with, Look what he did for us, and now we. You remember the story about the uh, the man had the servant, and he uh, forgave all his servants' debt, and then that servant went out, and he tried to beat up the other servant because he wouldn't pay. And when the landowner found out what he had done, he had to bring him back and put him in jail. See, his land, his his master had compassion on him. And mercy on him, but he didn't have, and he owed a lot. Mm -hmm. But the one, the other servant that owed him some, only owed him a little bit. That's right. And he wanted to beat him up for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when the master heard what he had done, he, he said, no, nah, you, you go to jail. Mm -hmm. You couldn't have mercy and compassion on that one, so I'm taking it back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. So, but... What? We have got to have compassion Amen. for people because what? A lot of times people say things or do things. You know that Satan working on them mm -hmm. and in them? Mm -hmm. That's Satan. They don't know. A lot of times they don't understand, but that's Satan that work in them. And he is a great influencer. All of the things that he is getting this generation to do right now, I mean, and it's not just, you know, the poor, unsaved folks. It's people in high places. Amen. That's right. Satan is using them, and he is using them mightily. But what? God is not going to always put up with this. He already said he ain't going to always jive with people. And after a while, he's going to get tired. And he's going to make a change. He'll let it go on for a little while. But what? We got to put our trust in God. Amen. Again, he is our hope. He is our help. He's Amen. the one that's going to keep and protect us. Amen. Okay, one, uh, one more verse. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory, but the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. This is the end of David's Amen. prayer. David, what? just like David, those that try to harm or destroy you are the ones that's going to find themselves destroyed and devoured. But what, David uh, is just letting God know that he knows that his help comes from him. Amen. You know, the king uh, told God that he was going to rejoice in him. And, you know, I know you're my help and I know you're my guide. And I'm going to follow you, and I'm going to follow your commandments, and I know you're going to take care of me. Mm -hmm. And he was going to have glory in that. Mm -hmm. But he knew also that, what it says, but the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. Mm -hmm. they will. And they will. Mm -hmm. There are plenty 
people out there talking against the people of God. Plenty of people. But their mouth's going to be stopped too. But what? We're not supposed to pray for them. Lock their job, Lord. <laughs> we can't do that. We can't do that. We can't. Why? Because that's not what the scripture tells us to do. We're in a different dispensation now. We're in the grace. And we got to love everybody. You know, even those that sometimes you think are not lovable. We still got to love them. Even those enemies we got, we got to pray for them. You know, because what? God is able to deliver anybody. He is able to save anybody. We don't choose who God saves. We look at somebody and say, they ain't fit for no salvation. We, who are we? We wasn't fit. <laughs> we weren't fit, but he saved us. So he can save anybody. You know, anybody. <clears throat> so, you know what? Let's put our hope and our trust in Jesus and let him be our guide and let him take care of us and, you know, and let him handle the situation like David did. You know, even though he prayed for destruction for his enemy. But, you know, like I said, he could do that at the time. But what? Our hope is in Jesus Christ. That's where our hope lies. Because we want to spend eternity with him one day. Amen. And we can't get there if we don't follow hard after him. And if we don't follow his commandments. And if we don't do what he says. Then he don't have to do what he said. The scriptures say. But what? That word is for the people of God. The ones who are following hard after him. He will be our protection. He will be our help. He's going to what? He's going to be with us all times. He's going to be what? Our presence. He's going to be our provision. He's going to be our protection. Because that's who God is. And if we believe his word, then we should be all right. Now, I ain't, you know, a whole lot of people say that, but sometimes you just get a little under the, you know, down and because of circumstances or whatever you're going through. But we just got to remember who God is. He is our help. He is our hope. He's the one that's going to sustain us. And now we're going to turn it over to Pastor for the final word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. We thank God for the word of God. Kind of some uh, teaching tonight. You all right, Judy? Oh, yeah. Just going to take this. So we thank the Lord for the word. Praise God. Coming from Sister Judy. In Jesus' name, let us remember that we can go to God and give Him our request. Amen. He said, Make your request known. Amen. Praise God. He is all, He's our all in all. Everything we need, God has it. Amen. Right? Amen. If he don't do it, he knows what's best for me. Amen. Right? Amen. Praise God. I say he knows what's best for me. Amen. Isn't that right? That's right? So we ought to continue to trust God and wait on God as hard to wait. Mm -hmm. David said, I will wait. Continually upon the Lord. We wait till nine o'clock and we don't get it. Then we go take it from the devil. The devil said, I'll let you have it at 10. <laughs> but we ought to wait on God. Amen. Don't you know when we get out of the will of God to get what we want, that it's going to be a curse to us, not a blessing? That's right. 
y'all don't believe that then. If you get out of the will of God just to get what you want to please your flesh, it will become a curse to you and not a blessing. But let us trust God. Even in famine, we can't go stealing. We have to wait on God. Cause he said, couldn't no thief get in. I said, he, he promised, I was reading it uh, last night, he promised to even take care of us in a famine just about. That's right. Praise God. We can eat deer, some people don't eat deer, but if that's all he got. <laughs> <laughs> the lady went to Jamaica and they had monkey for supper. Mm -hmm. God say, slay and eat, call nothing common but they had a monkey. So that's what they had for supper and the little kids were rejoicing. But this lady said, I ain't eating nobody's monkey. That was the first night. The second night, she said, I ain't eating nobody's monkey. God trying to provide, he's talking about what you eat. Even if I don't like it, I'm gonna eat enough to keep from starving. <laughs> but that third night, she said, bring on the monkey. <laughs> Praise God. Mm -hmm. But we ought to trust God at all times. Amen. Stop trying to make our own way. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. Right? Amen. Let us stop trying to make our own way. Trust in the Lord. What did Lee Williams say? God got a blessing waiting Amen. for you. Amen. If you do all the things he told you to do. But we have to do what God told us. That's right. right? That's right. Love your enemy. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be saved if I got to love my enemy. Mm -hmm. But I tell you what, <laughs> when you get in that hellfire, you will wish you had and loved it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? Because you have to love your enemy. Yeah. You have to forgive them. Yeah. And God's word declares that God will make your enemies be at peace with you. When mm -hmm. a, the Bible says, when a man weighs, please God. He'll make his enemy to be at peace with. Amen. I told y'all about my enemy. We used to fight all the time. And he told me not too long ago, he just down you know, we've been friends all our lives. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe he was sat there look at God. Ain't God good? <laughs> so when my enemy is on my trail, I say, Lord, I got some more pleasing you to do. That's what I think about. It. I don't cry and talk about Lord, why the devil bother me? <laughs> the Bible says when a man way please God, he'll make his enemy to be at peace with him. So when my enemy is still bothering me, that make me know I got to pray more. I got to read my Bible more. I got to rejoice more. Right? I got to meditate more. Isn't that right? Amen. Until I get to the point that I'm pleasing him. So we thank God Amen. for the lesson tonight, letting us know we have to trust God. Trust him, right? That's right. Trust him. How many will make their own way? But I'm going to trust God. Amen. Some people say, I feel lucky. I don't, I don't go on luck. Amen. I go on God's provision. Amen. Luck will run out. That's right. But God, what God got never runs out. So I'm going to trust him. Y'all agree? Right. He don't want us cheating and stealing and doing nothing to trying to provide for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we thank God. We're going to get home early tonight. Praise God. Uh, but we thank God for each and every one that came. I praise God. Mm -hmm. So uh, it'll give me a half hour longer next time. <laughs> Nah, just playing. But we thank God.